Nightbeat started the second year after the newscast uh, became established. Uh, at that time, Ted Cott was the, pro, the uh, station manager and fairly uh, imaginative person who said, well, we should do something else. And he and Ted and Mike met. I was not in on these meetings. I was still pretty much of a junior person there. And they decided to try an interview program at 11 at night. And at the beginning, it, it, it had the black background and Mike sitting there. And we had a sponsor that came in early on, Parliament. So Mike was smoking Parliament and there was the smoke that came up and just Mike and then the, the guest sitting there and it was all very dramatic. And he gradually developed his style during that period of the hard interviews. And these were prepared well in advance by two writers who were then hired to work on that show, separate from the news, two separate staff, so we all crowded in this very small space, uh, who did the pre-interviews and did the outlines for the interviews, although Mike winged it a lot, but these were not, not surprise interviews, or they weren't ad-libbed particularly, but they became kind of the sensation of 1958, and it was the show and we had news stories all the time about the interviews and people made news and it was a big, big deal. By then, I had moved up. I was associate producer and I was the chief booker and uh, had to fend off people who wanted to be on and then also had to chase other people that we wanted. So this was a big job for me too. I started writing all the publicity for the interviews that I would give to the station and they would take them away. And um, the other part was uh, during that same period, there was a, uh, a tennis player named Gussie Moran who was famous for you know wearing lace panties. Yeah. And she started uh, a 15 minute sportscast once a week, which they assigned me to produce and write. And so uh, we, had a res we had a research source. Actually, this was kind of a funny story because this man, Bill Lang, who, who came to us after Nightbeat started, and he saw that these were very uh, well-researched interviews. He was a radio announcer for like 25 years, and he used to sit in the booth, and he didn't have a lot to do, so he started clipping newspapers. And, what he, and he started categorizing them, like alcoholism, uh, crime, uh, different categories and also by the name of the person. So he came to us and what we started to do and because I was the booker and knew who was coming up, I would call once a week and say we've got to have a file on this person or that person and then when I started doing the sports show I started reading up about wrestlers and boxers and all that. I did all the research for those. So that was another job I had, getting the research material not only for Nightbeat but for the uh, sports show, which I think only lasted 13 weeks. She was really a pretty terrible interviewer. By the time this show went off the air and Mike left midway and John Wingate replaced him, we had over 800 guests. And we had, and I, don't ask me the list, the list was endless. We had anybody who was famous at the time. We had writers, uh, painters, political figures, city officials, uh, anybody who was making news or anybody that somebody thought was interesting. And, you know, I, I just I can't go through the, whole, the list. It was a million different people. They began to trust me and there was a big chart above my desk and I would fill in. We had two guests a night um, for half an hour, although we also started, the theater reviews continued, but Mike and I now were crazed. Um, we hired um, Byron Bentley, who was then the editor of Theater Arts Monthly. The basic process was calling them up, and once they c convinced them to appear, uh, assigning a writer, and the writer would then take it over and go uh, do the preliminary interview with them and get the Bill Lang file and come up. The big thing about Nightbeat is that, that just blew everybody's mind away at the time was that because these files were so extensive and went back so far, you'd have somebody sitting there. I remember uh, 
they'd be sitting there and there'd be a question of some actor about a new movie. And then Mike would say, in 1937, you said, and he would read some quote, and this person would say, God, you know, where'd they ever get that? So uh, we, you know, we made news with a lot of things too. Randolph Churchill was the, blew up on camera, uh, got so angry at uh, John Wingate that you know, it made headlines in all the afternoon papers. It was quite a to-do. Uh, so I mean, a lot of times things like that happened.